Right, so it's this time of year again. It's the end of the year Q&A. Um, you, you probably know the drill. You've asked me questions. I'm going to answer them. I'm feeling very sick at the moment, so I apologise if I sound a bit off. But So the first question has been asked by roughly everyone. And so it's, is 10-minute history coming back? And I'll expand on this by saying why I got rid of it. So I got rid of it for probably the reason you can imagine it was YouTube's demonetization policies. So what was happening is in January of this year, for the first time, I released uh, one episode a week and uh, two of them got demonetized, which means during that month, I lost literally half of my revenue. As such, I decided to then split the episodes into two and start doing two separate topics a week. The reason being that when inevitably I did get demonetized, I would only lose, say, one eighth of my uh, income a month. It was basically a case of in ja- if January had continued, I have lost the ability to make um, to do this for a living. Tenant history um, is obviously a lot of fun. I miss going into that much depth, but ultimately, if things were demonetized and they would be for completely arbitrary reasons then I can't make a living and so obviously that needs to be done I I do miss it honestly but I have no plans to bring it back at the moment I would like to and ultimately I reckon my last ever video on this channel will be a 10 minute history one but never say never any period you won't cover because of how confusing it is not really because things are confusing but simply because they're complicated and I don't feel I'm able to explain them most topics I can wrap my head around pretty easily it's just a case of there being certain areas where I know so little about I don't have any framework with which to work from for example say medieval India what is your favorite period in history so my answer always used to be 16th century European history it was mostly the reformation and the later counter-reformation that I really liked um since then that answer has changed now my interest is largely late 19th early 20th century political history because I mean obviously it's very interesting I also think it's now becoming ever more relevant and also it's got Bismarck so obviously And to counter this least favourite period of history, it's not so much as there are periods of history I don't like, it's just periods that I don't know very much about. Gun to my head, I'd have to say pre-Columbian South America, because I have no idea what's going on, and thus I can't like it. Königsberg or Kaliningrad? I mean, obviously Königsberg. Who is your favourite historical figure and why? Um, It largely changes depending on who I'm reading about at the time. A consistent one that I've always liked is Theodore Roosevelt, though. Are there any historical events you will never discuss for any reason? Yes, but I can't tell you because that would constitute discussing them. What's the hardest thing with presenting history on YouTube? So there are two difficulties. Uh, The first one is actually condensing information. I mean, often I'll take sort of 30, 40 page sort of JSTOR articles and then condense them into a three minute video, which isn't exactly easy. The second thing is, it turns out when you write a sentence, it doesn't necessarily sound good spoken aloud. And sometimes you end up writing tongue twisters. Do you know or wish to learn any languages other than English? So no, I don't speak any other languages unless you count sort of being forced to learn Latin like so many other English children are. But barring that, no, I have very basic German, but um, I've been told my pronunciation is atrocious. Although to be fair, I pronounce English words pretty terribly too. Thoughts on Paradox Grand Strategy Games? Um, I think they've been responsible for a couple of late videos. Top 5 Germanies? 5. The Weimar Republic, 4. The Holy Roman Empire, 3. Current Germany, 2. East Germany, and 1. Obviously, the Kaiserreich. What country do you feel doesn't get nearly as much attention as it should in the history books? So I'd probably say Poland. In fact, I'd definitely say Poland and also the rest of Eastern Europe because it turns out they existed and also they were very important. What inspired you to use that draw style? So I can't draw and paint had a rounded rectangle tool. Favourite Sabaton song? Uh, At the moment, it's Lawrence of Arabia, which by the way, the video, it turns out Indy Nidell is in that, which is pretty cool. Can you recall what got you into history in the first place? So actually, what got me into history was Civilization V. So there's a scenario in that game, The Fall of Rome, in which you can play either the eastern half of the Roman Empire or the western half, and I had no idea that the Roman Empire was split, and then I went down the rabbit hole and I've never come back up. What are your opinions on channels like Time Ghost being demonetized? And I'll expand on this by saying where I feel that history on YouTube is at at the moment and where I think it's going, if that's what interests you. So in terms of Time Ghost, I think that it's ridiculous that they're consistently being demonetized at this point. It seems strange to me, nothing even remotely, nothing on that channel strikes me as being even remotely controversial. And so I think it's weird. I understand that advertisers are very cautious about stuff like this. For example, you don't want to say, hey, drink this delicious drink, now back to the Holocaust. But ultimately, Ultimately, it seems weird to say to educational content, you can't make money off of this platform. 
they'll just have to find the information somewhere else. And so yeah, I think it's pretty ridiculous that they're being demonetized. As for where my opinions are on history and YouTube in general, I think it's in a very weird place and that 2020 is going to be quite a difficult year for some channels. If I had to put my opinions out there, I'd say that within the next 12 months, you're probably going to see a few history channels buckle and probably stop making content. I think that YouTube's heading in one direction in which educational YouTubers are going to be placed into the not trusted category and the trusted category. I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm not worried about where my channel is going or anything. I'm pretty comfortable at the moment. But in terms of these other channels, you see that they upload videos and they're just immediately demonetized. And I think that once you get demonetized a certain amount, it sort of starts this snowball effect and you really you'll struggle to get out of it. Um, as such, I can see some channels just simply never getting demonetized. And I think within the next sort of six to 12 months, you're going to see them making many, many, many more Patreon appeals. If those don't work, those channels are ultimately going to stop as the people who run them are going to have to get different jobs. Yeah, so this is a really unhappy ending to the Q&A, but that's my feelings on, on where YouTube is at the moment. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be great for many people. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with thanks to my Patreon supporters whom you can see on screen now. Plus with an extra special thanks to Danny Maloney, Cool and Castleman, Party Boyko, Rob Waterhouse, Mo, Aaron the White, Michael Reynolds, Chris Wicker, Gustav Swan, James Bizonet, Urshway and Emperor, Gareth Turner, David Silverman, Spinning Three Plates, Maggie Pakskowski, Christian Cheke, Spencer Lightfoot, Winston Kaywood, Anthony Beckett, Kelly Moneymaker, Robert Wetzel, Lexi Schwinn, Sky Chappelle, and Ike.